Thank you for joining us today for Lunch with Lucy. Um, we're back after about a four week hiatus, back and better than ever. Um, for those who have joined us for the first time, we're so happy that you're here. My name is Kate Remillard and I'm on the marketing team at VHT Studios. Um, I'll be your MC today. And we have an amazing guest, but before we get started, I just need to mention that we have everyone muted except for our panelists. So if you have questions for our guests, just add them to the Q&A box on your screen and we'll answer those as we go as well as at the end. And then we'll also announce the five winners of the free lunch provided by VHT Studios at the end. So hang on till the very end and um, you must be present to win. That's all the announcements I have. So now I'm happy to introduce our host, Lucy Edwards. Hello, everybody. Lucy Edwards, Director of Client Success at VHT Studios. And I'm welcoming all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. And today I have an amazing guest, Ben Azari. He is a Kate Camp inventor, and he's also an author of several uh, uh, books that were published uh, on on health and on stress and on how to fight all that and how to uh, uh, how to be productive and positive. Uh, hi Ben, how are you? Hey Lucy, great to be with you today. And hey Kate and everybody else, grateful to be with you today. So I would like to start Ben with the basics. How did you get involved in uh, in the industry? How did you decide to uh, open your own company and start your own business? And I would also like to uh, touch base about your amazing journey uh, that you went through yourself on weight loss and uh, on being focused and productive and starting a new life. Absolutely. So I got started in the health space back in 2008. I was 24 years old. I was obese, weighed 250 pounds at that time. So physically obese, also, also mentally obese with toxic thoughts, going through a really hard time in my life. And I didn't really know anything about health and nutrition or fitness. I just followed whatever my friends were doing. So I was lost and I knew that I needed to have better energy levels to work on my goals because I had goals that I started to develop, but I didn't have the energy for those goals. So I decided to take ownership and responsibility over my health for the first time ever. I said, I'm no longer the victim of my history. I'm going to become the victor of my destiny. And I took responsibility. So I started to eat better. I started to exercise and I started to take ownership. Nine months from that moment of responsibility, I went from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds, 34% body fat down to 6% body fat. So I achieved this physical transformation, uh, finally achieved a, a physical six pack, which is something I always dreamed of as a kid. But the most important thing I believe I achieved was a mental six pack. I started to think better thoughts. I started to understand how important those thoughts are for your health. And that's what got me started. I, ever since then, I was a personal trainer. I had a CrossFit gym, sold a CrossFit gym, and then I became certified as a functional health practitioner. And my company, Keto Camp, as you mentioned, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire a billion people, to help them with their energy, with their health, with their productivity. And I'm excited to share some of the principles we've been teaching all across the world uh, with you all today. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the great introduction. I would like to start with stress. The last year and a half were extremely stressful. And I would say majority of our audience are from real estate industry and they went through so many ups and downs. And uh, it's it, and the, the last year and a half were extremely stressful for every one of them. Uh, so I would like to touch base on how you can level it out, how you can live with yourself in the morning and, and be focused and not just be running around, uh, running yourself to the ground. Yeah, very important question, Lucy, because stress is more than ever before, uh, especially in the realtor space. As an entrepreneur, a lot of uncertainty, there's been a lot of uncertainty and there still is. So when we think about stress, it's estimated that 90% of all disease is linked to chronic stress. And those stress comes in three areas, mental, emotional stress, physical, and chemical stress. So I'm going to start with something really practical for those watching today. Your thoughts could actually create stress and disease, or your thoughts could actually build health. And that's not woo-woo. There's science to back it up. There's a gentleman 
named Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a wonderful cell biologist who I interviewed on my Keto Camp podcast. He has proven that your thoughts send uh, frequencies to your cells to tell your DNA to produce a specific protein. If it's a negative thought, a stressful thought, what I call a stinking thinking thought, that could be an inflammatory protein. So what I always say is that when your thinking is thinking, your dreams are shrinking. So I would start right there and you could control your thoughts. It's, it's going to take some consistency, but the morning is important. The morning is when your subconscious mind is very impressionable. So I would recommend for all of you not to check your phone first thing in the morning. I know that's very hard to do, not to check your text messages and your social media updates, but maybe grab a pen and paper and start writing down your goals. Start writing down what you're grateful for. Start feeding energy to what you want to work for you. And as you do that, you're gonna think better thoughts and you're gonna become those thoughts. And if they're healthy, loving thoughts, you're gonna get healthy, loving results, including mental clarity and productivity. So I would start right there, control that morning routine. Well, thank you. I also would like to my to kind of roll it into stress, sleep, uh, I, again, I'm trying to relate everything to realtors and every realtor I spoke to, uh, everyone I know, and I know, I, I know quite a few of you guys, everyone is suffering from lack of sleep, waking up in the middle of the night, worrying about something, making notes. Uh, I, I do that, you know, I, I'm, I'm no exception. So, and, and you know, it's just like when you watch all the commercials, oh, you have to get that mattress and that pillow is going to save your life and you will have better sleep. But I'm sure it goes all beyond mattress, pillow, and beautiful herbal tea. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Those are great, but it, it's, it's beyond that. Yeah, to your point, Lucy, sleep is very important. Look, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since 2008, 13 years. I understand your space. I understand the entrepreneur space. I've worked with a lot of realtors as well. I used to have the mindset of I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to grind. I want to have more hours in the day. I'm going to out compete people who are sleeping. And I realized that is actually a winning formula, excuse me, a losing formula. Because if you're able to prioritize sleep, you're going to be more productive during the day, even with less hours. And it's going to help with fat loss. It's going to help with detoxification. It's going to help with your stress levels. So getting at least, I, I believe, seven hours of quality sleep each night is imperative. I'll share a couple of, of tips for you that are very practical. Having some sort of nighttime routine is important. For me, I have what's called blue light blocking glasses. These are these orange glasses that I put on at night, which is going to block the blue light coming from my TV screen or cell phone or even the fluorescent lights in my house. And it's gonna allow your body to produce melatonin, which is a sleep hormone, also antioxidant. So you might wanna get a blue light blocking glasses. I also like something called banana tea. If you've never tried banana tea, I learned about this from my colleague, Dr. Michael Bruce, who's been called America's sleep doctor. Here's how you, how you make it. You wanna grab an organic banana. You wanna leave the peel on the banana and just cut off the ends of the banana. The peel of this banana, of the banana, has more micronutrients, magnesium, potassium, than the actual banana itself. So you wanna put that banana with the peel on into a pot of water and boil it until the peel starts to turn brown a little bit. Then you're going to pour that water into a cup and you're gonna drink that banana tea. It's like nature's NyQuil. So you can give amazing. that a shot. Yeah, isn't that cool? It tastes pretty good too. And then one final tip is, Having your bedroom cold and dark has been shown to get good, deep, restorative sleep. And when I say cold, the studies suggest 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And when I say dark, as dark as possible. If you have blackout curtains, great. If you don't, you can wear a sleep mask. But as you get quality sleep, you're going to wake up more refreshed. You're going to think better. You're going to be more resilient. And which we'll get to, you're going to make better decisions with the food you put in your mouth. I totally agree with you. Sleep, I am based on my experience when i have good night's sleep in the morning first of all i do wake up at five something every morning regardless but i'm so much more energetic and productive and uh and positive so i think it is very 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 important uh probably should not have uh, red wine before you go to bed right <laughs> wine wine is going to disrupt your sleep it might make you feel sleepy but it's not going to help you get quality sleep so yeah you're right Again, being in a real estate world and meeting so many realtors and uh, networking and mingling and just to just 
just talking to realtors. I understand that we all, again, I include myself, enjoy a glass of wine or two uh, in the evening or whatever. So how do you feel about alcohol? I'm not talking about excessive alcohol. I'm talking about like socializing. Yeah, so if you're going to do wine, I would look for an organic wine. There's also a, a type of wine called dry farm wines. I like that. Biodynamic wine, uh, red wine would be better to get more of this uh, antioxidant called resveratrol. I would stay away from the beer. The beer will cause more issues than the organic wine because beer is what's, what's, what's uh, called estrogenic. It'll raise estrogen in the body. So if you're going to do alcohol, organic wine could be fine. Also clear alcohols like vodka and even uh, like tequila on the rocks could be also better, but you don't want to have it in excess to lose this point. No, 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 I totally agree with you. No, we're not talking about an excess. Maybe on Saturday. You, <laughs> you don't care about your sleep. Um, and, then, and then again, trying to relate right now to our realtors, snacks. They always on the run. We're all on the run. Uh, and sometimes you have showings from early in the morning to late at night. Your weekend is shut. You have open houses. Uh, you are obviously not going to come with your salad. So what's, what would you recommend for someone uh, who is constantly in a car or in meetings? When we, when we think about foods that will take energy away from us or foods that will support your energy levels, we need to break down the three macronutrients. So we have protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Those are the three macronutrients. Carbohydrates will give you what's called a glucose spike, blood sugar spike, much higher than protein and fat. The issue with having a lot of carbohydrates and, and snacking on carbohydrates is that it might give you an immediate hit of energy. So you feel good. You eat that Snickers bar or whatever it is, but then it'll crash down and then you need to keep eating and keep eating and your energy levels fluctuate. So I think if you could prioritize eating more protein and fat, it does not have the same glucose response. It'll keep your energy level stable. So beef jerky, beef sticks, um, oh. macadamia nuts, walnuts, nuts and seeds that are organic. These could be beneficial. Avocados, these are hard boiled eggs. So any of those would be much better to support your energy levels versus high carbohydrate stacks. And what about coffee? We all love coffee. And I personally can only have one cup a day because I get very hyper and then you can grab me from the top of the Empire State Building. But <laughs> what, what would you recommend, especially when someone is sitting in the office and doing prospecting and phone calls, and then it's cup after cup, yeah, I love coffee. I'm, I'm a big fan of coffee. I'm a bit of a coffee snob myself. Uh, so I always say get organic coffee if you can, because coffee is typically sprayed with pesticides and herbicides. So I like to get a clean coffee source, but there is uh, the best time to have coffee. And this is one of my favorite tips for entrepreneurs. A lot of people are blown away by this tip. So it turns out the worst time to have your cup of coffee is first thing in the morning, right oh. when you wake up. And, and here's, here's why, here's why. Because caffeine is in the coffee, obviously, but when you wake up first thing in the morning, there's a hormone in your body that is activated and high called cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Cortisol is fine in, small, in the right amount, but in the morning, it's at its highest point. If you have your cup of coffee with your cortisol being high, the cortisol will render the caffeine pretty much useless, which will result in you wanting a second cup or a third cup or a four hour energy or an afternoon energy slump. But if you wait an hour and a half after you wake up, so that's 90 minutes, cortisol will begin to drop down. Then you have your cup of coffee. That'll give you much more sustainable energy levels. So you don't have to drink several cups throughout the day. I know it sounds crazy to some of you because you have it first thing in the morning, but maybe you start with waiting 15 minutes and then 20 minutes, but build up. If you wait an hour and a half, you're gonna notice better energy levels and focus. Would you apply the same system to teas? I'm talking about caffeine teas. Yeah, coffee. good question. If it has caffeine, I would apply the same system to tea, yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's possible, Kate, do we have uh, polls on coffee from, uh, from what you just uh, put up? Did, uh, do we have any kind of results? That would be interesting. Uh, it would be interesting to know uh, because majority of us do start our morning with coffee and that's, uh, our son, he, for example, he brews his coffee in the evening, so it's ready first thing in the morning. So the moment he opens his eyes, he has a cup of coffee right there in front of him. So I will make sure I will uh, share your tips <laughs> with him. It'll help. 
it'll help. Yeah, it looks like 53% uh, of you have one to two cups, 19% two to four, only one person admitted to having five or more cups of coffee a day. And 26% um, said none at all. So oh, really? Have. That's that's interesting. 26%. Yeah. No, that is great. Um, so how would you start being like if you, you know, you are pretty, let's say you are rather young. Well, for me, rather young, like in, let's say 40s, early 40s, and you are uh, in decent health, but you would like to feel better about yourself. You would like to have more energy level. Uh, you, you want to build better habits and maybe you are new in real estate industry and you are not even adjusted yet to snacks or coffee or tea or running around. What's your recommendation? There's a food group in our environment that is the most inflammatory food group. It causes the most inflammation, leads to the most disease, energy issues, just a whole host of health issues. And this food group, I'm gonna give you a list shortly, but this food group, it's even worse than sugar. Because at least if you consume sugar, you could exercise and burn off that excess sugar. You can't really burn off these food groups and they're called vegetable oils. They're also known as industrial seed oils. They are very inflammatory and it's estimated, Dr. Kay Shanahan, uh, who's a researcher that I interviewed on my show, she estimates that 30 to 40% of the average American consumes these vegetable oils from their total calories. They're everywhere, they're at restaurants, they're at Whole Foods. So if you're aware of it, you can make better decisions. So I'm gonna give you a list of what's, they're called the hateful eight. So it is canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, um, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, rice bran oil, and grapeseed oil. It's actually nine of them. <gasps> Rice bran oil, but it's so light. What about avocado oil? So avocado oil is great. That would be a better option. So so would coconut oil would be a, a better option. Um, olive oil would be a better option. Even real butter, like grass-fed butter, would be a better option. Those are more stable fats. The other ones are called polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, and those are really inflammatory. They will mess up your energy levels for sure. So you want to avoid them, limit them as much as possible, and eat the healthier ones that we just mentioned. I joined some of your uh, presentations and your webinars. You have an amazing YouTube channel, by the way. That's how I met you, uh, yeah. Brian, because I, I, it, it just, it's just, it's great. And it's what I like about it, that you can choose your subjects and your topics and you can just dive into it and, uh, and get more information on it. And you really have great uh, presentations also on fats and how we have to be careful. It, it looks, some, some products and some food looks very light, but really it's so bad for you and it wears you down. You wanna mention some of, on that? Yeah, so that's why it's important to look at the ingredients and in the foods that you're eating and not fall for the brilliant marketing that they do. They're really brilliant marketers. They'll tell you, oh, gluten-free or organic or GMO-free or keto-friendly. Don't fall for that. Turn it over, whatever you're having, look at the ingredients and see if it has those inflammatory fats. If it does, you're taking some hits. It's, you're taking a lot of hits. It's going to suck your energy levels. Your, your cells cannot use those fats as an energy source. So the ones I mentioned avoid as much as possible. Of course, trans fats and avoid those as much as possible. Uh, I see Bobby saying peanut oil as, as uh, you know, asking if that's one of the bad ones. Peanut oil can be better if you could find an unrefined peanut oil. So there's variations of peanut oil. I would avoid refined and get uh, unrefined. But yeah, to your point, Lucy, the bad fats are the ones that I mentioned and those are the ones we wanna avoid as much as possible. What about adding collagen to your coffee? I like that idea. Collagen is great. If you could find organic grass-fed collagen product and put it to your coffee, collagen is great for skin. Uh, collagen has high quality protein, great for muscle building. So I think it's a great way to enhance your, your coffee. If you want to replace your breakfast, if you're having like oatmeal or cereal or something that's high carb, I think it's a great idea to replace that with a coffee with collagen or even some butter, what's called a keto coffee as a great way to keep your insulin levels and glucose levels steady to give you more focus, more clarity, and it'll also help satisfy you so you're not hungry as well. Do you mind the nine oils that are no-no? And I have a question, I'm from Russia. So in, in Russia, we have 
unrefined sunflower oil, which mm -hmm. really smells like sunflower, which I personally like that smell. Um, but would you say that is also a negative product or is it better than the sunflower oil you purchase in the store? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So that's fine. If you could find an organic unrefined sunflower oil, that could be healthy. Uh, so I'll list, the, I'll list them again real quick. So there's three C's, three S's, and then three others. So the C's are going to be canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil. The S's are going to be sunflower oil, safflower oil, and uh, well, there's another S that I can't think of right now. Sunflower oil, safflower oil, and there's another one I can't think of. Then there's grapeseed oil, there's uh, peanut oil, and then there's, uh, that, that's, that's the eight right there. I, I forget the whole list off the top of my head, but if you go to um, ketocampblueprint.com, there's an entire guide I have printed out. It gives you a exactly grocery shopping list. So ketocampblueprint.com, camp is spelled with the K. And someone is asking about melatonin. And, uh, and I, uh, I personally use it. It doesn't help me at all. I can have a whole bottle and it will not put me to sleep. But uh, what's your opinion on that? Well, what was what, the bottle of what? I missed it. Uh, uh, maybe I'm not pronouncing it right. Melatonin. It's oh, melatonin. Like, yeah. So, melatonin. Um, Julie, I, I, and Julie, said, Julie said soybean was the one I couldn't think of. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. correct. Soybean oil was the other S. Thank you for helping me remember. I think melatonin is great. Look, melatonin, your body produces it naturally, but I, I love taking it uh, supplement wise because it could also help, by the way, with uh, with COVID. It could, uh, there's some studies that show it could help with COVID, the immune system, anti-inflammatory, cancer fighting. I love melatonin. The unique thing about melatonin, it is a hormone, by the way, but it's different than other hormones. For example, if you're taking like testosterone hormone or some other hormone, estrogen or something that your doctor has you prescribed on, that might shut down your own body's capability of producing that hormone. That doesn't happen with melatonin. So I would recommend melatonin. I take it often, but I would make sure you get it from a quality brand that sources it the right way. Why doesn't it help me? I'm telling you, I have to have 10 pills at night and it's just like nothing. Like wake up and go to work. <laughs> so melatonin, if you're taking it orally, like a capsule, then yeah. it's estimated that only 3% of it is actually being used. Um, so you might want to look for what's called a liposomal melatonin or even a suppository melatonin to, to help the increase the, increase the uh, rate of absorption for the melatonin. I'll try that. But first, I will try healthy lifestyle. I think that will help me sleep better. Absolutely. Uh, we have a question. What are your top three keto foods for folks embracing a low-carb lifestyle in the world of carbs and sugar everywhere? Mm, top three keto foods. Um, I like, I personally love red meat. I think red meat's great. So you could find grass fed, grass finished red meat that could be highly anti-inflammatory and really healthy for the body. So I would put grass fed red meat. I would also put avocados are great. Avocados are great for several reasons. A lot of people eat bananas by the way, cause they're like, Oh, bananas have potassium, bananas have potassium, but avocados, one Haas avocado has twice the amount of potassium than a banana. And a quarter of the sugar and none of the sugar actually it's much better so avocados and i would even throw in eggs like organic pastured eggs so those would be three foods that you could stick with that could help really help you with your energy and fat loss and inflammation i can live on avocados so okay. yeah I, I i love them yeah absolutely someone is asking ben what did you say you were a victim of history and uh, victor of so when you started uh, when we started the conversation so the, I said I was a, I used to be a victim of my history and I decided to be the victor of my destiny. That's what I said. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> it is indeed. You just, you basically take your fate into your own hands and you make things happen. That's exactly what you're trying to say. Amen. Exactly. Another question here is from Paula and she wants to know um, when doing a 48 hour fast is bone broth permitted. It says so kettle gonna, and fire. I don't know what that means. Kettle and fire is a brand of bone broth that I like. Okay. Um, okay. So that's what she was referring to. So Paula, bone broth is going to break a fast. So it would be considered what's called a partial fast. If you want to get the most benefits from being in a fasted state, I would recommend water, some sea salt, electrolytes. If it's too hard for you to do that, then bone broth could be a great, what I call crutch. 
and that would be considered a bone broth fast. So there's benefits to it, but you won't get as many benefits as just having the water and electrolytes during your fast. Hmm, interesting. Um, one more I have here from Kim in Des Moines. Um, how do you get enough servings of fruits and vegetables daily when you're doing keto? Yeah, well, the cool thing about doing keto is that it's so anti-inflammatory when you do it the right way, the way that we teach it, that you don't need as much of the fruits and vegetables and the antioxidants because you're not combating a toxic diet. But you do want to get some fruits and vegetables. So let's talk about vegetables. I like green leafy vegetables. Uh, you could have a big salad for lunch with uh, wild caught fish or organic chicken or beef. So arugula, dandelion greens, bok choy, those are great. I also like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And if it's hard to get that in, you could always go for like a super greens powder that has a lot of that, those vitamins and minerals, but in a powdered form, you just drink with water. That could be an option. Now for fruit, um, you don't necessarily want to have a lot of fruit on keto because it'll raise glucose and knock you out of ketosis. But if you're going to have some berries like blueberries, raspberries, blackberries in moderation, that could be fine. I would stick with those on your keto days. Well, you're talking a lot about organic food and grass-fed meat. What about organic beer? Someone asked me, someone asked here uh, about organic beer. I like that question. Joseph wants, he needs to justify having his beer, huh, Joseph? <laughs> no, very good <laughs> question. Um, organic beer for sure is better than non-organic beer. However, it's still going to be estrogenic. It's going to raise estrogen in both men and women. Uh, so I just, it's not one of my go-to options when it comes to alcohol. I personally don't drink. I haven't uh, had an al any alcohol in over five years. But if I did, I would have a glass of whiskey on the rocks, or I would have vodka on the rocks, or I would have a dry farm wine. That, that would be my go-to. I, I like your options. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> what about diet soda? Yeah, good, good question. I know that's a lot of people's go-to. So Faith asked that question. Diet soda, sure, it doesn't have the sugar and the calories as regular soda, which is great. However, it does have typically aspartame or sucralose or some sort of artificial sweetener, which is not healthy. I, during my lectures, I show a lot of studies that show what aspartame and sucralose could do to the body. It could raise glucose and insulin. It could lead to more hunger cravings. It could mess with your gut diversity. Uh, it could cause inflammation in the body. So I'm not a fan of them. Here's what I would switch to for you. I would switch to a carbonated drink that has stevia in it. So there's a brand called Zevia. There, it's all over the place, Z-E-V-I-A. That would be a much better option than diet soda. I actually used to be like addicted to that stuff. It really kind of tastes like a diet Coke or something. It's, and they have other flavors too, but yeah. um, I suggest that as well. Love it. Yeah, Zevia is great. Don't get addicted to it, but the Zevia is great. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben, if you don't mind, please put in a chat to your website and how uh, everyone can connect with you. Meanwhile, Kate, do you mind checking other polls and see what the results are? I think it's great to uh, find, you know, to, to see what everyone is uh, thinking and doing and how they are involved in Kato <laughs> camp. And, and I would love to know if you can put it in the chat, if anyone uh, were involved in Kato diet or Kato camp. Uh, I, I understand that quite a few of you uh, know Ben personally, so you probably are part of his team. So that would be great. And I see a question from Barry about monk fruit sugar. Is that a good thing to replace sugar with? Yes, monk fruit is fine. Stevia is fine. Also, there's a sugar alcohol, alcohol called erythritol. That's fine as well. Just in moderation. You want to have it in moderation. If you could find a liquid version of the monk fruit and the stevia, that would be better as well. Thank you so much. So what other polls did, what other results did we have? Yeah, so I just launched um, our last poll asking who has tried intermittent, intermittent fasting. Um, so the votes are coming in. It looks like actually 36% is currently practicing intermittent cool. fasting. Um, and 47 has tried it, um, but didn't stick with it. And then 19% has never heard of it. Can you speak to intermittent fasting? I don't think we've covered that yet. 
Yeah, great opportunity to talk about it. I think intermittent fasting is probably the best tool for an entrepreneur, and I'm going to explain why. A lot of people believe that food gives them energy. They are relying on snacking throughout the day, big meals. The truth of the matter is that food does not give you energy. Food does the complete opposite. Think about the last time you had, maybe it was a Thanksgiving feast or a Christmas feast or whatever holiday feast. Your immediate thought was not, I'm ready to go make some sales calls and, and do some showings or get some work done. No, no, your immediate thought was, where's the couch? I want to watch some football. I want to turn into a couch potato because it takes a lot of energy, resources, and blood flow to process a meal. When you practice fasting, and I'm going to explain how to get started with it, intermittent fasting, then you're diverting energy away from digestion because you're not eating now it's being used to fuel the brain. That blood flow is being used to fuel the brain. The body does amazing things during the fast to actually pump you full of energy, focus, and, and just great resources. They're called counter-regulatory hormones. So you could go out there and hunt. That's what your body's doing. It doesn't care. It isn't, the body's hardwired for the old school. Every single one of our ancestors did fasting and keto. So when we don't eat 16 hours or so, we're fasting. The body thinks, uh-oh, we're going through a famish. Let's keep this body alert and energized so the body could go out there and hunt and kill the next meal. It doesn't know, the body doesn't know that we could just press a button on our phone, Uber Eats, and have somebody knocking on our door in 45 minutes. It goes through this process. So you could use that energy to crush your day, to crush a sales call, to crush whatever presentation that you're doing. I'm fasted right now. I haven't had anything to eat right now. It's 1.34 p.m., uh, my time and I feel the most productive and alert when I'm fasting. So the way that I teach fasting is to first get into ketosis, which I teach in my book, Keto Flex, and then we pair fasting. And here's how a simple way to practice fasting, 12 hours. You're done eating at 7 p.m. at night. You go to bed. You don't eat until 7 a.m. You fasted for 12 hours. And then what you want to do is start to push out your breakfast from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then 9 a.m. And eventually, if you could get to like a 16 hour fast going until 12 p.m. or so and have a six or eight hour eating window, you're going to feel more productive, productive and more energized. And someone is saying I fast from 7 p.m. to noon the next day. Yeah, that's amazing. Good for you. Thank you, David. What about maple syrup, honey or agave root? Are they good for you? Maple syrup and honey, those, those are, are still sugar. It's going to raise your glucose and insulin. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of it. If you're going to have those, sure, it's better than like processed sugar. But if you're going to have them, do them around exercise possibly so you could burn out, burn down the excess glucose spike or go for a 15-minute walk after you have it to help with the glucose response. Same thing for agave syrup berry. Uh, so Kate, do we have other polls, other results? Someone is asking for, for results. I'm, I'm wondering as well. Yeah, we had one other about sleep. So let me pull that up here. So um, the sleep question, how many hours of sleep do you get per night on average? 22% said eight or more. 53 was in that middle, like six to seven hours, 53%. And then 25% of you get less than six hours. That's not good probably, right, Ben? Less than six hours? Yeah, so the 25% of you, we got to get that up to seven hours. You're going to feel much better if we get it up to seven hours. And uh, everyone, uh, please note, you can go to vht.com slash learn and watch the, uh, so if some, you know, if you want to re re uh, revisit everything we've been talking about, uh, you will find the episode there. So you can share it with your friends and you can watch it again. You can get all the details you might miss. So that, uh, that is available at phd.com slash learn. Ben, that's so much fun. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, really interesting facts and hints and suggestions for us. I know, oh, there's, there's so many more questions out there and I feel bad we didn't get to all of them, but- Do you mind? Maybe we can get a couple more. Everyone is still on. Yeah, one person was asking, they said that they're a pescatarian, so they only eat fish. Is it still possible to do keto if you don't eat red meat? Yeah, it's possible because getting into ketosis is not really about eating a whole bunch of fat. It's about dropping your carbs below 50 grams for the day. So you can do that with fish. Um, so absolutely it can be done. My, 
My colleague, Dr. Will Cole, has a great book called Ketotarian, which talks all about that. Awesome. Let's see if there's one more. Uh, la, la, la. Oh, somebody is asking if agave um, is okay to use as like a sugar sweetener. So um, Barry, I would recommend the same thing for the honey and the maple syrup. If you're going to have it, I wouldn't say it's healthy, but if you're going to have it, go for a walk afterwards or maybe do it around exercise to burn off the excess glucose from it. How can you have maple syrup without a pancake? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, all right. So let's wrap up here. Um, ben, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I think everybody was super into this <laughs> and um, remind people where they can find you and where they can watch your videos. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Lucy. It was an honor to be on, on the show. I love what you're all are up to. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a, a recent book. It's called Keto Flex. If you want to get the book, it goes through my four pillars. There's a chapter on sleep. There's also a chapter on how women should do keto and fasting differently than men. So you can get the book by going to ketoflexbook.com. There's also an entire meal plan in the back and a grocery shopping list. So ketoflexbook.com. And then I'm all over social media. Just type in Ben Azadi or Keto Camp, Camp with the K. Love to hear from you. I'm very accessible on social media. Awesome. Well, someone just asked very quickly, I eat a lot of nuts. Is that good? So it depends on the type of nuts. Uh, I like more macadamia nuts. I like walnuts. I like something called peely nuts. Uh, I, I like those. But if you're going to eat a lot of nuts, it could slow down your fat burning efforts. So I'm not a fan of eating nuts all the time. But from time to time, it could be fine. Uh, just make sure it's organic. Uh, make sure it's raw. And I would stay away, by the way, here's a little tip for you. I would stay away from the bulk bins at the market. So for example, if you go to Whole Foods supermarket, they have the bulk bins where you scoop out your nuts and seeds. I wouldn't get it from there. I would get it from the packaged ones instead because the bulk bins are open, they're closed. It, it causes the nutrients to be lost. Mold could grow in there and people are putting their hand in there. So I would recommend the sealed ones. Thank you. That's Yeah, that's a good advice. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, especially with COVID. I wonder if they are still doing that. That would be, yeah. All right. Um, so as we wrap up, make sure to visit bht.com slash learn. You can register for our upcoming Lunch with Lucy's. Again, look out for an email. I'll send it tomorrow. It'll have the link to this show so you can rewatch it um, or share. On the 29th of this month, we'll be speaking to Rebecca Rose from a company called Studio. And they're doing some really amazing things with interactive digital presentations for real estate. Um, really recommend you join and us. And that is all we have for you folks. So thank you again so thank much. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. And Ben, thank you. It was an amazing, amazing talk show with you and uh, greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.